What's up, YouTube? I'm back with another video, you know, staying consistent as always, you know. And a topic that has come to my mind ever since the Insomniac leaks is the video game industry is going in a direction that is unsustainable. And the reason why I say that is because Spider-Man has a budget of over 316 million. It's bringing up a lot of conversation uh, with a lot of people and because it was also revealed earlier in the year that GTA 6 has like a budget of two billion, but like a billion is for marketing and the other billion is actually for development. But it's like a lot of people are saying there's no way more and more games are gonna cost this much money. And a lot of single player, highly developed games like you know like the last of us and all that stuff they're becoming more and more expensive to make and this is causing ceos and and bullshit uh companies come and say yeah we need to increase the price of video games because it's unsustainable even though the amount of people who play video games are more than ever like they're just they just want to make more money but the reason why i say it's unsustainable because you can't keep making games at this rate and have the development be so long it is causing people to buy less and less because there's only gonna, there's gonna be people and i know personally because i know them that only buy like two games you know what i mean they buy the call of duty or madden you know what i mean or the 2k and then they buy one first party game and that's all they got because the more you increase how much it costs the less people want to spend money on it and that's why people aren't buying new ips because why would i spend 70 dollars for something i don't know like let's take the game scorn for example and this game is a totally different beast. It's very different than what people would normally play, right? Now, if they was to release this as a $70 game, not a lot of people are going to buy it because one, it's a new IP that people don't have a lot of experience with. And two, it's $70, you know what I mean? Why would I spend $70 for something I don't know rather than $70 for a game that I do know? People will buy 2K and complain about it, but it's really the only game that they are familiar with and know what they're going to get. If I can't tell my homies, like, hey, let's buy, buy Scorn. It's like a first-person shooter, but it's not like Call of Duty. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? Because they're not familiar with any of these type of games. And so the general audience is like, yo, if y'all increasing the price, I'm not going to expand my diversity at all. When you see the um, people posting there, you've played this game for this amount of hours. This is the stuff you play. This is how diverse your, uh, your game library is. And people post the same games as Call of Duty, Madden, 2K, and maybe Red Dead Redemption 2 because everyone talks about it and it's about Rockstar. You know what I mean? But no one's putting like the indie games up there. Like, you get what I'm saying? And so it's really it's going down a road. And the Sony leaks confirmed this with how they're saying they want to break up the Spider-Man. This is the thing they're thinking about. is breaking up Spider-Man 3 into three different parts, each $50. So it's like part one is $50, part two is $50, and then uh, uh, multiplayer is $50 for a total of $150. And they're talking about increasing their your games again to around $80 to $100. You are out of your fucking mind if you think I'm going to spend that amount of money on a fucking game that's be split up in parts. And this, this leads down another road where I think a game crash is going to happen. A video game crash. And for those who don't know, in 1983, there was a video game crash where basically, um, due to, not lack of technology, but lack of it, of the internet, fans didn't know, fans of video games didn't know what games were quality or not quality. And it kind of lead up to a point where they just stopped buying games in general. Because the way you would get video games back then was through like mom and pop shops. And so... Let's say you were to let's say you were little Timmy, you were like 15 years old, and you go into a store and it's like, oh my god, this new um NBA Live game is out, right? And NBA Live was not in 1983, but <laughs> just work with me. You get you get an NBA Live game, right? And it's like some uh it's complete dog shit. Doesn't work. This is that third, you wasted sixty dollars, right? And you try to return it and they say no refunds. They're like, well, fuck it. I'm done then. I'm not doing it. That's basically what majority of uh, video gamers did in the, uh, the 1980s. And a lot of stuff also happened, but that's pretty much the main genesis of the video game crash. And I think this is going to happen again because CEOs think they're fucking slick with, we're going to increase the game a little bit each generation to see if which one we're going to buzz. Like games now should not have been $70 because PlayStation will come out, come out with a stupid ass excuse talking about, Oh yeah, it's 
we need to increase the price for development. And there's a bunch of fucking neck beard nerds out there talking about, yeah, like if they if we increase the price, then you know, development can be better for developers. This money is not going to the developers, okay? It's going to the CEOs who won't lift a fucking thumb and won't do shit. Okay, but they'll get that stab, that bonus check at the end of the year, talking about, oh, this CEO from this company got a bonus check of $300 million for his vacation. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Or what's that one dude? It's that one CEO who gets played uh, in purely microtransactions. Like, all the funds that fans get from microtransactions, it goes directly to him as, like, a bonus check. And he's making, like, fucking eight figures not off that shit, you know what I mean? It's fucking crazy. So, we really got to keep an eye on how everything is going from now on, especially the way Sony's trying to move and the whole thing at the end where they're like, um, they were talking about the Game Pass and how they can't replicate the success of that and shit like that where like they're, um, basically were like bitching and moaning because they bought Activision and all that shit and how like they can't do this and the third my only sony can easily fix this shit if they just release games on pc they're doing this thing where it's like they're trying to sell consoles over selling like uh software and games you know what i mean it's like bro people who aren't gonna play the fucking game uh, or aren't gonna get ps5 you're never gonna get their money you might as well release it on the systems that they can't play Oh, they can play on. It's like it's not fucking hard. Yet. I don't know. I don't understand the reluctance. It's like they're stuck in their old ways. And Xbox, is like, yeah. So anyone can play if you have a Game Pass. Like they're trying to get Nintendo to have a Game Pass. You know what I mean? Like you know how dope that is. It's reaching a boiling point where people are just sick of buying games. Why do y'all think games like um, Anthem is such held in a poor regard? Because it was dog shit when it dropped. It was still dog shit the entire time. And the people who tried to defend it were like, Anthem was dead before it even arrived because people just wanted to hate the game. It's like, no, the game was shitty. Like, what are we doing here? And journalism doesn't help. Gaming journalism is so dead and like pointless. I never understand the point of them because they, they, they dick ride companies to get exclusive offers and they don't even keep it a bug. Especially when, when Cyberpunk came out and that's a whole nother tangent. I, that's a whole nother tangent. I, I, if I do that, I'm calling a YouTuber because I bought Cyberpunk day one over the backs of these fucking YouTubers talking about, yeah, this game, other than minor glitches, it's not that bad. It's, it's a pretty good game. Everything you expect it to be. Fuck out of here. Anyway, and then we'll see in the next five years how everything shake. Definitely after these leaks. And if Sony has the nerve to split games up into three parts just to get as much money as possible. Like, we're really going to see what's cracking. And that's the video. Hit the like button, subscribe, and share. And if you like this, share with your friends. You know what I mean? And don't forget to hit the sub button. That's all I got. Peace out.